We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Make your presence known in this place. We welcome you today. We welcome you today. We welcome you. Sharamana Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. I ask that you give every one of us an encounter tonight. Let your word come forth with precision, accuracy, to address the issues in the lives of your people. Let everyone be elevated. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I can't hear you. Now clap your hands, give God praise. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Please take your beautiful seats. It's my joy to welcome you to Neumatech. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's my joy to welcome every one of us to the house of God. This very place, Neumatech. And I want you to know that the house of God is the house of bread. The bread of the word of God that brings satisfaction. The bread that is able to fill every hungry heart. The house of God is a place of divine visitation. Remember the experience that Jacob had in Bethel. The Bible says while he laid down in that place to sleep. In a dream, he had an encounter with the Lord and he awoke and said, This is the very house of God and the gate of heaven. In other words, the house of God, which is the corporate gathering of believers. Jesus said, Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. Location does not matter. As long as they are gathered in his name. He said, I am there. And the house of God becomes an access point into the heavens where men can come into fellowship and oneness with divinity and it is in that zone that transformation occurs it is in that zone that god visits you he comes into your life and does something that changes your life and brings a turn around in your destiny every time you come to the house of god god will definitely address issues in your life it is not just for you to come and listen to the word of God again and again. It is not only the encounter you have with the presence of God. But the house of God is also a house of refuge. It is a place where you can come with your heavy heart. It is a place where you can come with all the burdens that you carry. And allow the spirit of God who is the spirit of liberty to bring a lifting. To bring a relief from the burdens and the sorrows that life has brought on you the bible says in second corinthians 3 17 that the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty liberty freedom from all the pains the struggles the sorrows around you 
Even if you don't hear anything at all when you come to the house of God, being in that place alone is enough. There is something that happens to you and then the burdens and the sorrows of this world is lifted from you. Because the Holy Spirit in that place and at that time turns your attention on Jesus. He takes your eyes away from all the insufficiencies of this life. He takes your eyes away from all the things that you have gone through or the predicaments that are around you. And he focuses your gaze on Jesus. And it's in that moment that you are lifted to a place of glory. And tonight before I begin to preach, I feel a very strong burden in my spirit to prophesy on a few people here. There are some of you that have been coming to the house of God again and again and again. You keep coming for these programs week after week. You've heard people give their testimonies of the great things that God has done for them. But your life, it looks like nothing is happening. It looks like everything is stagnant. And for a while, the devil has tempted you to almost believe that this is how your condition will remain. I bring you a word of comfort. That though you may not see, though it does not appear like it is right now, but God is doing something in your life and in a moment of time and in a season that is about to come upon you, God is going to make your life a witness of His power, of His grace, and God will make even the heathens know that He is your God and you serve a living God. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm prophesying again. For those of you that are here, some of you, this is your part of the service. You hear people give their testimonies again and again. Great things that God has done. Nothing seems to be happening in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that in this season and in this month, God will do something in your life that will be a signature of His power, a signature of His presence, a signature of His name. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm prophesying again that God is going to turn your life around in this season in ways that will cause you and the people around you to marvel in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ those of you that came here with burden, with sorrows, with pains possibly you are here thinking about the next meal or thinking about how you will come out of the situation that you are in I decree and declare in the name of he that is called Jehovah Jireh that before the end of this service may God do something that will cause you to be amazed and to wonder at his mighty power in the name of Jesus Christ I declare over your life that this season God will bring a change of story your way God will bring a turn around for you. Listen, the Bible says where two or three are gathered, whether it is in the fire, whether it is in water, it doesn't matter the location. And for some of you, you may probably be in a furnace of affliction right now. You may be in a furnace of adversity. It looks like all hell has broken loose around you. But get ready because the fourth man in the fire is about to arise for you. That's the reason why you came to this service. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that God is arising for you in this season. I declare that God is arising for you in this season. I speak over your life and I declare a turn around. A turn around. A turn around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please take your seat. I'm hearing something in my spirit and it's a prophecy for somebody. This is why you came. I want you to receive it. It said, when, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, it said, we were like there, my that dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our lips with joy. Then said even among the hidden, that the Lord had done great things for them. God is sending me to prophesy upon somebody that this is the moment where he's turning again your captivity. I don't know who I'm speaking to, whether to a family or to an individual, 
probably you may be here or listening online I declare that God is stunning again your captivity I declare that El Shaddai is stunning again your captivity is stunning again your captivity in the name of Jesus Christ God is bringing you out of that financial predicament the God that we serve was the God that did it in a twinkle of an eye Elisha said to, to the, the officer that, that the king leaned on he said by this time tomorrow that's why you came here the reason why God brought you here is so that while you are here listening to the word God is causing men systems and structures to come together and to produce a miracle that you have never seen and I prophesy over you that before this time tomorrow you will be singing a new song I declare that you will be singing a new song I declare that Elohim will arise on your behalf El Shaddai will arise for your family in the name of Jesus Christ listen to me every situation you left before coming here while you are here seated my goodness that's going to be your anthem after this evening it's turning the, the situations around it's turning the tides in your favor some of you all you need from this service is a baptism of the joy of the lord and i came to declare to you that that joy is your strength hallelujah listen listen to me listen it is never a waste of time when you give your time to a place where the word of god is taught with wisdom with precision and in truth it is never a waste of time when you are committed to spiritual and mental transformation it is never a waste of time just relax it looks like nothing is happening just hold on something is changing in the realm of the spirit and when that edifice that god is building for you in the spirit is completed it can happen in one night it can happen in one day and i'm prophesying again for somebody you have come to the point of your manifestation you have come to the point where your heavens are opening in your favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. I assure you that you will never leave this place the same. <laughs> Something is already happening in your life. Huh? You will be changed. His glory revealed. When the spirit takes over your soul, just listen as I prophesy to you. When the spirit takes over your soul, when the spirit takes over your soul, you will be changed. 
His glory revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. While the word is coming to you, you will be changed. His glory revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. It's not just the information of the scriptures that you listen to. You are also receiving impulses, waves of the power, the glory of the Spirit of God. There is spiritual substance that is deposited in your spirit while you are seated and listening to the Word of God. Information is taught. But revelation is received, is caught. And for some of you, while you sit, while you are seated listening or following online, the wisdom of God that will bring a turn around in your life and that will lift you unimaginably to your place in destiny is coming via the Spirit of God to you this evening. And the name of God will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Are you set tonight? Please be seated. Let's journey into the word of God. By the grace of God, I want to bring a teaching to to us tonight. And next week that I believe will bring a total change and a shift in your walk with God and in your experiences as far as the things of the Spirit is concerned. Title of my message tonight, The Fellowship of the Believer. The Fellowship of the Believer. Fellowship of the believer. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. The fellowship of the believer. Second Corinthians 13 and verse 14. He said, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Somebody say amen. Amen. The word communion there is the word koinonia in the Greek. It means fellowship. It means fellowship. It means fellowship. In other words, it means to share or to have in common. And the Bible says the communion of the Holy Spirit. So God has brought us into the kingdom as believers. And the whole story of your life now that you are a believer will be captured in. Or will be an offspring of the sharing together and the common union that you will have with the Holy Spirit. It is very important that we understand that we have been called to a place of participation, of intimacy, of partnership with God through His Spirit. Revelations 3 verse 20, another scripture. Revelations 3 verse 20 Very popular scripture In Sunday school we used to quote this scripture again and again Revelations 3 verse 20 Behold I stand at the door and knock It says if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will come into him and dine with him and he with me do you have it in amplified amplified 
says I will come into him and dine with him and he with me behold I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears and listens to and heeds my voice and opens the door I will come in to him and will eat with him and he will eat with me of course he was not just talking about literally eating as it were Jesus was trying to dis describe the kind of relationship that a believer is set to experience when you are open to an experiential life with God you are brought to a place where you have a common union a sharing together a participation with the Holy Spirit it is an experience that cannot be denied Jesus says I will come into him and eat with him and he with me you know eating is always used in scripture to describe communion communion people are bounded together in scripture there are two natural uh, activities that are seen in scripture by which people are bounded together or people are covenanted together either through eating that is sharing a meal together or through sex when jesus shared the last meal with his disciples he called it the communion they became one because they had a sharing together that is the same way that god wants you to have a sharing together with him so god's goal and desire is that you become one you come to a place of oneness a vital place of union with god through fellowship with his spirit and when your life continues in that experience a time will come where men cannot separate you from the presence of the holy spirit a time will come where your life becomes the literal expression of the presence of god this has nothing to do with ministry this has everything to do with the life of a believer and that's why i'm sharing tonight on the fellowship of the believer the fellowship of the believer the fellowship of the believer here's what i wrote here the fellowship of the believer is a relational experience exclusive for the believer which is based on the reconciliatory work of christ on the cross now for those of you who are writing i will just take it slowly so you can get me the fellowship of the believer is a relational experience exclusive for the believer which is based on the reconciliatory work which is based on the reconciliatory work of christ on the cross based on what christ did on the cross we have been brought into a relational experience in other words the world cannot have this experience with us Here's what Jesus said in John chapter 14 and in verse 16 to 17. Just to buttress on this um, definition of the fellowship of the believer. The reason why it is exclusive only to believers. Here's what Jesus was telling his disciples. Jesus said, and I will ask the Father. I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. And then in verse 17, he describes whom this helper is he says even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him he said but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you the world cannot receive the holy spirit the world has nothing in common with the holy spirit only a believer based on the sacrificial work of jesus christ on the cross has access to this exclusive life of fellowship with the holy spirit in fact the bible says in ephesians chapter 1 in verse 13 and 14 that when we believed god sealed us with the holy spirit of his promise so the presence of the holy spirit in the life of a believer is the seal of god on that believer and the access that the believer now has into a common union a common relationship every one of us on earth we have people we call relatives 
people that we are related to by blood you are related to them by blood or by family affiliations as it were so also when a believer is saved he or she by reason of the presence of the holy spirit has been brought into a life of sharing of participation of fellowship with god through the holy spirit it is exclusive only to believers when jesus died on the cross here's just a little illustration that i want to give to you look at this remember that jesus was crucified on the cross right and the cross is a horizontal and a vertical wooden you know structure and here is my explanation of that that the vertical part of the cross is significant of jesus reconciling men to god while the horizontal is significant or is a spiritual significance of jesus and his sacrifice on the cross which has reconciled men to men so he brought a reconciliation between men and god and men and men in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 and 19 gives us a pure expression of this that i just said to you now the bible speaks of reconciliation he says that now all things are of god who has reconciled us to himself through jesus christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation that is that god that means this is the ministry of reconciliation that god was in christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespass to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation that we have been reconciled to god that is the reason why we can experience fellowship with god next week we will look at the horizontal aspect which has to do with the, the relationship between men and men or better put the relationship between believers we'll talk about that next week but for this week we want to examine the relationship that exists between believers and god which is what we call fellowship somebody say fellowship are we ready tonight so the believers relationship with god is hereby consummated through the fellowship the experience of fellowship that he or she ex uh, 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 um, indulges in with the holy spirit the fellowship of the believer there are three things we will see today under this teaching and then we will pray number one we will look at the channels or platform of fellowship number two we will look at the goal of fellowship number three we will look at the product of fellowship this experience that we have been brought to enjoy with the holy spirit we are going to look at the channels or the platforms of fellowship we are also going to look at the goal of fellowship and also we will look at the product of fellowship let's look at the channels or platforms of fellowship in other words the systems upon which the systems in the kingdom upon which your fellowship with the holy spirit is based on or predicated on firstly prayer the first platform of fellowship with the holy spirit that a believer can enjoy is prayer prayer is one of the platforms one of the predications upon which you can experience fellowship with the holy spirit the bible says in ephesians 6 verse 18 it says praying always with all prayers and supplications in the spirit you know praying in the spirit is different from praying with the spirit do you know that yeah 
first corinthians 14 deals with praying with the spirit we'll talk about that later but ephesians 6 deals with praying in the spirit that's the same thing that jude verse 20 says that building up your most holy faith by praying in the spirit in other words now that you experience fellowship with the holy spirit prayer is done on another level prayer becomes a platform that that relationship that you have with the holy spirit can become a definition or reality in other words somebody can look at what your prayer life produces and discover that prayer is one of the platforms upon which you can have a common union with the holy spirit prayer is one of them another platform is worship worship in fact jesus said in john chapter 4 verse 24 that god is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit worship is another platform another channel through which your fellowship with holy spirit can be expressed can be experienced so when you either lift up your hands or open your mouth to sing songs of adoration or even at times worshiping him through the reverence of silence whichever mode or posture of worship that you take part time is offering you or worship offers you a platform where you can have an experience of the fellowship that you have with the holy spirit i have said before that the goal of worship is that the worshiper becomes like the worshiped worship is meant to transform or translate the worshiper to the point where the worshiper becomes like the worshiped are we here worship is one of those platforms another platform upon which you can enjoy fellowship with the holy spirit is meditation <laughs> not much is spoken about meditation but brothers and sisters let me teach you one very powerful key by which your fellowship with the holy spirit is not only experienced but is also lubricated meditation meditation is more than just a mental exercise meditation is is an activity that allows you become intimate with the word of god and with the person of the holy spirit meditation is the process that allows a fusion between your understanding of god through his word and the reality of god as spirit in other words what you know about god metamorphoses into a real-time experience with the very god that you know about meditation very very powerful in fact there are many things that we can come into many realities in god that we can come into we can experience through meditation every time you sit down to meditate on the word of god it is a kind of intimacy that is happening between you and the spirit that is behind the world remember in ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 the bible says and the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet when he spoke so when the word of god came to the prophet there was a process of meditation that was happening and while he meditated on that word he broke into the reality of the spirit that is behind the word the goal of fellowship is that the god that you know in your understanding moves into becoming a real experience remember she quoted a scripture when she came up to take the testimonies in job chapter 42 verse 5 he said i have heard of you with the hearing of the ear he said but now my eyes see you that happens in meditation and it is a healthy practice for a believer to engage in meditation consistently meditating on the word of god meditating on the person of the holy spirit how much time do you spend meditating on the person of the holy spirit it is in meditation that the person of the holy spirit can become real to you 
Because contrary to what the people of the world think, the Holy Spirit is not a thing. The Holy Spirit is not a force. He carries with Him a force. But He's not a force. The Holy Spirit is not wind or fire or any of the natural elements by which we can uh, uh, relate with in talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. In truth, the Holy Spirit is a person. is a real person. You can touch Him. You can see Him. You can experience Him on the platform of meditation. Meditation. Another platform or channel for fellowship is the Word. The Word. The Word. The Word. Either as, as touching reading of the Word. In fact, in Revelation chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible says, Blessed is he who reads the prophecies in this book. Do you know that by just reading the Word, you enter into the blessing? And remember that the Bible says in Ephesians 1 verse 3 that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing which is in heavenly places in Christ. Do you know that by just reading the word, there is a release of the blessing of God through the Spirit over your life? Just by reading. Studying the word as well. And even to the point of listening to the word of God. All of these are the platforms and the channels of fellowship that a believer can experience. Either through prayer or through worship or through meditation or through the word. And you can also add if you want to, through fastings. Through fastings. It was part of the culture of the early church. The disciples of old, from the Old Testament even to the new testament the disciples of jesus and the church they practiced fasting the reason is because when you fast there is little activity little activity in your flesh in your natural body because of deprivation of food there is less energy in your body so fasting helps to humble your body so that your spirit and your mind can gain ascendancy fasting helps in increasing your consciousness of god and it is by your consciousness of the things of god and of the things of the kingdom that you can enter into the real-time experience consciousness you know jesus said that he will never leave us he said lo i am with you always even to the end of the age but there are times in your life where you feel like God is not with you. Is that true? I hope you know that was just a feeling. God was always there. Even in your darkest nights. Even in your loneliest hours. The Bible says in Psalms 23 in verse 4. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yet I fear no evil. For thou art with me. He never leaves. But it is your consciousness that determines how much of him you can experience per time. So fasting helps to increase your consciousness of the presence and the power of the Spirit of God that is available to you. Do we understand that? So it's not like you become more powerful when you fast. No. You only increase in the consciousness of how much power of the spirit of god that has always been resident in you because whether you fasted or not the presence and the power of the holy ghost was in you and with you he said the helper will abide with you for how long forever it is only that when you fast your consciousness of what is inside of you and with you or what is available to you increases if you are here say amen the goal of fellowship having looked at the channels and the platforms of fellowship let's look at the goal of fellowship the goal of fellowship in other words what do you stand to gain what are the objectives for the fellowship of the believer as touching the person of the holy spirit 
Number one, transformation. These are the reasons behind God's desire for the believer to experience fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Goal number one, transformation. Everybody say transformation. transformation. Say it again, transformation. transformation. What is transformation? Transformation is the process of change that can happen in the life of a believer. The process of change that can happen in the life of a believer in keeping with or as touching the model of God for that believer, which is Christ. The model for the believer's change as far as God is concerned is Christ. The Bible says Christ is the image of the invisible God. Colossians 1.15 So our transformation, the goal of our transformation, the goal of our change from one dimension after another is that your life comes to a point of conformity to the image of Christ. So people can look at your life and see through your life the wisdom of Christ. See through your life the person of Christ. Your character begins to display the person of Christ. They may not have been around 2,000 plus years ago when Jesus walked on the earth. But a man can look at your life and be able to see through time to Jesus that walked on earth who carried the fullness of God in him. That is, the, that is what transformation is all about. This is the goal for fellowship. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 a very interesting scripture that gives us the format or will I say God's intention or the summit the ultimate purpose of the transformation of a believer here's what he says he said but we all it is not just talking to pastors it's not just talking to music ministers or businessmen he said but we all with unveiled faces beholding us in a mirror the glory of the lord are being transformed into the same image how from glory to glory the same image that's the goal not anything less the same what a privilege that god wants you to come to a point where your life commands the same result as the life of Jesus Christ commanded. God wants you to come to a point where your life produces the same realities as captured in the Christ. So if Jesus walked in the power of God, that's the goal of, 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 of transformation for you as a believer. That we are transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the lord so the spirit of god is the engineer in charge of that process of transformation and every time of fellowship that you have with him the goal is that he transforms you from glory to glory <laughs> i wish i had time to talk about glory this word glory is something that you need to understand as a believer Glory speaks of virtue. Glory speaks of fullness. Glory speaks of excellence. It speaks of brilliance. It speaks of wealth, splendor. It speaks of weight. In other words, the substance, the very content of God. All that God has and is. And the Bible says God is transforming you from one experience of glory to another I pray for you that after this service as you step into this week you will have experiences in your life where you will literally see and be able to identify the operation of the new dimension of God's glory that is at work in your life that you will know for certain that there is something about you that is not human Yes. From glory to glory, as by the Spirit. 
Number two, the goal of fellowship is growth and edification. Growth and edification. Growth and edification. The goal of fellowship is that the believer will mature. Is that the believer will be edified. The word edified means two things. You know, edification is from the word edify. It means two things. First of all, it means to... Let me use the illustration of a battery that is charged. When a battery runs down, when your phone battery runs down, what do you do? Do you cry? No. You simply connect it to power so that it can charge in other words power is the provision for your battery to increase to the fullness of its capacity that is what edification means first of all it means to be recharged so what the holy spirit does as you experience fellowship with him is that he recharges you he increases the energy that is at work inside of you first corinthians 14 in verse 4 the bible says that he that speaks with a tongue edifies himself but he that prophesies edifies the church right edifies himself recharges himself another meaning for edification is to build to build in jude chapter 1 verse 20 Give us in the Amplified Translation. You will love the Amplified Translation of this, of this verse. Very powerful. It is very vivid and explicit. It says, But you, beloved, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith. Make progress. This is what it means to build. It says, Make progress. Rise. Tell your neighbor, rise. Tell the other neighbor, rise. It says, Rise like an edifice. Imagine a, a, a skyscraper being built from one story after another, from the first floor. Then after two months, five months, they have gotten to the fourth floor, the fifth floor, the tenth floor. The Bible says that is how you rise in fellowship. He said you are rising like an edifice. That means because an edifice increases in levels, that means that the adversity that surrounds you at a particular level and seems to overwhelm you no longer holds a place in your life when you move to another level. Did you understand what I just said? You heard the testimony of the young man who was challenged by a demonic situation in his life. And as he kept coming and prayer was made on him, soon, he, he, all that God did was to increase increase the capacity that is in his spirit and he came to a point where the demon could not no longer relate with him he said rise like an edifice higher and higher the people of the world say the sky is your limit but based on this definition in the kingdom the sky is your starting point Praying in the Holy Spirit. Oh, I love to pray in the Holy Spirit. The goal of fellowship with the Holy Spirit is so that you can experience growth and edification, that you are matured in truth. Remember that He is called the Spirit of Truth. The Bible says in John chapter 16, in verse 13, that when He comes as the Spirit of Truth, He will guide you into all truth. The more, the, act, the more access you have to the truth that exists in God is the more you are matured. The more you grow, the more you are edified. And as you grow, the responsibilities that God can place on you as touching the kingdom increases. Then the Bible says, a little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation. Even Abraham, as he walked with God, he started out as Abraham, exalted father. 
But as he walked with God, a time came when he became Abraham, father of many nations. In fact, a time came when he became the father of the whole world. Because in Genesis 13, the, 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 the last three verses, God told him, He said, Unto you and your descendants will I give this land forever. Beat your chest and say, I am making progress. Day by day. As I walk with the Holy Spirit. As I fellowship with the Holy Spirit. My life is growing. My life is being edified. And I am going from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is true. It may not look like it. Now, you re realize that this is a spiritual process. So you cannot, you, cannot, you cannot distinguish it by your natural eyes alone or your natural senses. No. Some of you, unknown to you, God has invested so much in you by reason of your fellowship with the Holy Spirit that what is in you now can sustain an entire community. What is in you now is strength that is commensurate to 100 men. But when the season for manifesting that reality comes, that's when your eyes will be opened. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. He said, Though it does not yet appear what we shall be like. He said, But when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Growth and edification. And number three, the goal of fellowship is preservation. So number one is transformation, that you are transformed to conform to the image of Christ Jesus. Number two is growth and edification, that you are matured in truth. You are matured in character. You are matured in grace. And number three is preservation. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, Paul made a very powerful rendition, a statement there that I want you to put inside of your heart as far as your christian experience is concerned he said i pray that your spirit soul and body be preserved blamelessly until when the coming of the lord remember the bible says we are the salt of the earth and one of the one of the the the, the, the duty of salt is to do what preserve now the only way you can preserve your world is when the working of the spirit of god in you commands spiritual psychological and even physical preservation oh yes you can be preserved all around if god does not preserve you physically you will die before fulfilling your god or dead destiny i hope you know on this earth death is a reality It is possible that the life of a man can be cut short. But the Bible says of you, it says, you shall fulfill your days. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus. By the working of the Holy Spirit in your life, I declare that the mouth of the grave is shut over you. And I declare that the fullness of your days you will see. In the name of Jesus Christ. That you are preserved spirit, soul, body he preserves your mind by constantly renewing it through the word of god he preserves your spirit every time you spend with the holy spirit there is a deposit of spiritual substance in your spirit that preserves the energy of god at work in you the life of god at work in you at that level that is the reason why even in days where you don't pray you still find the activity of the holy spirit around your life is that not so it's true there are days you don't pray there are days where you feel weak isn't it the psalmist says in psalms 42 he said why my soul why art thou cast down 
He said, hope thou in the Lord. Even when you are depressed or when you are down, there is a level of preservation by the Spirit of God in you that keeps you flourishing, that keeps you ever increasing. I declare that that will be somebody's experience for today. The Bible says that the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. A palm tree is the only tree that can grow anywhere. It is the only tree that defies the drought of the desert. And that's who you are. Finally, before we pray, the product of fellowship, the product of fellowship, the product of fellowship. In other words, what do you stand to gain? Your communion with the Holy Spirit, the intercourse, the intimacy that happens between you and the Holy Spirit is meant to produce something in your life. Let me help you by scripture define those things. Number one, the first product of your fellowship with the Holy Spirit is what I call revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge. What is revelation? Well, what is revelation knowledge? Revelation knowledge is a thorough understanding of the patterns. A thorough understanding of the patterns allocated for the specific spiritual outcomes. Revelation knowledge is a thorough understanding of the patterns of God. Of the patterns of God. Or of the patterns of the Spirit. That is allocated for the specific spiritual outcomes. In other words, the realm of a Spirit is a realm of realities. Everything that you have been called to enjoy or experience in God is spiritual. Revelation knowledge gives you access to the patterns. Because listen to me brothers and sisters, our God is a God of patterns. Even when building a house, there is a pattern for building that house. It is called the model. It is the model for the building that is created first before the building. Because it is the model that defines the specifications of the building. Revelation knowledge gives you access to the patterns. Is it favor that you are going to enjoy? Is it the grace of God? Is it the power of the Spirit of God? Is it accessing the wisdom of God that the Bible says is hidden from this age? Every kind of experience in God is summed up together and locked up in mysteries that are called patterns. Revelation knowledge gives you access to it. It is by revelation knowledge you can transmit your experience with the Holy Ghost in your private time of worship to a public gathering. There is a pattern for that. Otherwise, the same God that you worship in your secret place and enjoy His visitation and experience His hand at work, You'll be shocked that without revelation knowledge of the patterns, when you stand and lift the mic, it doesn't matter the song you sing, the whole place will be as dry as possible. It takes a revelation of the pattern to translate personal experience into corporate realities. It is by revelational knowledge that the gift of the Spirit of God at work in your life can be translated to a point or used to fulfill the ministry that has been released to you by God. Revelation knowledge. Wealth is a reality in the kingdom. True wealth comes from God. But you need an understanding of the patterns. It's not cryptocurrency that will make you wealthy. It is good though if you want to trade. Are you hearing me? Every transactional trade that you enter into on this earth as a believer 
is not what makes you wealthy. No, 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 no. It is firstly the understanding that you have accessed about wealth being a reality in the kingdom, being your inheritance, and how that reality and inheritance can be translated so that what you do now becomes a channel of expression. Because there are two people serving Akara. One is richer than the other. Why? It is the value that is communicated in their transaction that, that, that differentiates them. So it is revelation knowledge. That is the reason, that is the first product of your fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That means every time you spend with God, unknown to you, you have been impregnated with a wisdom that cannot be taught. With a wisdom, the Bible calls this wisdom the wisdom of God that is hidden for your glory. It is hidden so that you can, be, you can profit from it. It is hidden so that when revealed to you, it gives you an advantage. It places you at a vantage point above the systems of this world. Let me show you a scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 to verse 12. Oh, I love this scripture. As it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. He said, but God had revealed these things to us by his spirit. Emphasis on the word reveal. In other words, it's not the kind of knowledge that is decimated in or disseminated into a process. It's not a knowledge that you have to go through a process of learning for. It is a knowledge that escapes and comes into your heart at an instant. In fact, this kind of knowledge is called unction. Or the ability to come to this kind of knowledge is called unction. What is unction? <laughs> unction is the power of the spirit of God in an individual to come to the knowledge of a thing at an incomprehensible speed. The power, the ability of the spirit of God to come into the fullness of the knowledge of a thing at incomprehensible speed. In other words, at a speed that the human mind cannot explain or calculate. More than the speed of thought. First John chapter 2 verse 20. It says, but you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. Knowing all things there simply means you have access to the truth behind all things do you know that when you are in a situation a fix that looks like is about to swallow you up completely and almost all of a sudden in a moment knowledge comes from nowhere you just have this knowing that this is what you should do and you are you do it and apply it and you come out probably you are driving and all of a sudden while on top speed you try to apply your brakes and the brakes lock up. All of a sudden, the steering has a will of its own. The first thought that comes to your mind is, you are going to die today. And then all of a sudden, a knowing comes into you to say, Jesus. And as soon as you mention Jesus, the car stops on its own. Not because you stopped it, it stops on its own. What happened to you there was that revelation knowledge was given to you. As a way of escape from that situation. And it came by a reality called unction. That unction comes from the Holy Spirit. How do you explain prophecy? That you look at somebody you have never seen. And begin to say things about the family of that person. About that person that is true. How? How? Revelation knowledge. It's one of the products of fellowship. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10. He said, but God has revealed this thing to us, these things to us by his spirit. He said, for the spirit searches all things. Yes, even the deep things of God. He said, for what, but what man knoweth the things, the things of a man, save the spirit of the man that is in him. 
He said, even so, no man can know the things of God, save the Spirit of God. He said, but we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us by God. Ah, it becomes more interesting in verse 13. These things that have been revealed to us, if you think you have to be taught from class 1 to class 2, this is how the Bible tells us that He teaches us. He said that these are not things that are teaching by the, well, taught by the words of man's wisdom. But by the teaching of the Holy Spirit, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. In other words, using or explaining spiritual truth with spiritual language. It is a teaching that you cannot, that cannot be comprehended by a natural man. Revelation knowledge. I tell you the truth, any man that has access to revelation knowledge can never be at the mercy of anything never though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death instead of me to faint or become depressed the Bible says I will fear no evil why for thou art with me it's a knowledge that has been revealed thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies so every time adversity rises around that man, you see him begin to dance and praise God. And you think he's a fool. No. He has realized by revelation that it is in the midst of adversity that God prepares a table of plenty. So there is plenty in scarcity. There is abundance in adversity. He said, when men say there is a casting down, you shall say, exaltation has come. Why? Because of your access to revelation knowledge, which comes to you true fellowship sometimes some of the things that happen to us in life and we are confused about and probably things that you need answers to has it ever happened to you before that sometimes if after thinking about those things tra cracking your brain and see trying to see how you can solve them and you are not able to solve them and you just forget about them and keep spending time with god all of a sudden one day god just brings the revelation or the wisdom to come out of those things to you has it happened to anybody here mm -hmm. you want to know which lady to marry among these three and then one day you are not praying about it it just comes it didn't just come it came as a product of a constant and consistent life of fellowship You need it for ministry. You need it for business. How can you how can you do cryptocurrency trading without the Holy Spirit? Hmm. If God does not help you, you will lose and uh, until until you lose all your life savings. Because it's as it's as unpredictable as it is. But there is an intelligence that is supplied by revelation he will tell you buy this coin and then you buy it when it was not expensive nobody is trading there and then one week later one of the world's billionaires just entered that platform and instantly you are massing into wealth and after boasting for like one month he comes to you one day and say withdraw all that you have now shut down that account and when you refuse one week after that statement the whole platform has crashed then you come to church and sing it is well it is well with my soul now it is true that it is well with your soul but you should have avoided that danger lay your hands on your head i prophesy to you that the unction of the Spirit of God will rest upon your life from today. Amen. The ability to know all things at all times. Receive that grace now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. You need it for life. You need it for your academics. Some of you have been doing well academically and now you are in your final year. Your final year rather. And the Holy Spirit comes to you and says, I want to teach you how to study. Say, but Holy Spirit, there's no need. I can do well here. And it tells you before you write any exam, 
after studying, go and pray in tongues for one hour. He said, ah, Holy Ghost, if I pray, I will shake everything out of my head. And then you foolishly obey. And when you enter the exam hall, all of a sudden, while you are seated with the tension around, that same presence you feel in your secret place just comes on you. People are sweating because of the difficulty of the question. You are just chilling and enjoying. And while you are writing, after writing all you know, all of a sudden it's like somebody is whispering to you. And people can't explain why in your final year, that was when you had A's in all the courses. When they come to you, tell them there is no long story around it. The helper, the Holy Spirit. Number two, the product of fellowship, righteousness and holiness. Righteousness and holiness. In Romans chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible calls the Holy Spirit the spirit of holiness. In fact, that's why he's called Holy Spirit. Romans 1 verse 3, he says, And was declared to be the Son of God with power as by the spirit of holiness. He is the spirit of God that imputes the gift of righteousness in every believer. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 8 to 9. He is the spirit of God that imputes the gift of righteousness. And when he imputes that gift and nature of righteousness in you, living right becomes a natural thing. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. Ezekiel 36 from verse 26. Look at this. Ezekiel 36 from verse 26. And I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgment and do them. So the essence for having the spirit of God in you is that by the dwelling of the spirit of God in you, you will find walking in righteousness and holiness a natural thing because it is a nature that is inside of you. The nature of a dog is to bark. The nature of a lion is to roar. The nature of the believer is to live right. It becomes natural because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. He didn't say because you know the commandments. He said, no, I will put my spirit in you. He said, then I will cause you to know my statutes and to do them. So it is the Holy Spirit in your heart that will caution you when you are about to double into evil or double into unrighteousness. In fact, do you know that David's prayer in Psalms 51 from verse 10 to 11, he says, Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit. Right? Sorry, he said, Create in me a clean heart and renew New King James says a right spirit. So he's called the right spirit. The spirit of righteousness. Cast me not away from your presence and take not the Holy Spirit from me. No matter how long an unbeliever has been in church, he cannot live a life of righteousness because he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. It is not by how long you have been in church. It is not even by how much language, church language you have. The Bible says, by their fruit, you shall know them. That's what he said in Ephesians 5, 8 to 9. He speaks of the fruit of the Spirit of God, which is in all goodness and righteousness. It is the Spirit of God that helps you produce righteousness. Ephesians 4, 22, or 20, yeah, 22 to 24. Paul began to give us an instruction. He says that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful laws. And then he says and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And finally he says that you will put on the new man which was created according to God. How? In true righteousness and holiness. Righteousness and holiness. It becomes a lifestyle. 
He said, you shall hear a voice behind you that will say, this is the way. Walk in it. So that you don't turn to the left and, the, and on your right. You need the Spirit of God in you to effectively live a life of righteousness and holiness. In the midst of this crooked, wicked and perverse, there is evil everywhere. You don't need to look for it. It's like the air. So you need the Spirit of God to help you live right. What happens when a bribe of a hundred million is before you? It's easier said than done. Oh. I hope you know. Now I just said hundred million, it looks like nothing. Imagine when hundred million is before you. Either as check or cash. And all you need to do is just, is just compromise a little. It is the Spirit of God in you. That nature of righteousness in you. That will give you a glimpse of eternity. That you will not eat what will become a cost to your children. I've seen a lot of rich people whose children are something else. Nothing to write home about. Corrupt, evil, wayward. And some of them I realized it was because of their corrupt dealings. But the nature of righteousness and holiness in you helps you to live and stay right in this world. And finally, number three, the product of fellowship with the Holy Spirit, power and influence. And this is where we'll stop tonight and pray. Power and influence. Power and influence. <laughs> Now look up as we get ready to pray. What makes a man speak and his speech becomes influential in the hearts of men? What gives a man the ability to convince every and anyone amongst his audience? What gives a man that uncommon ability to exert power not just over men but over things? Do you know that it is not natural to influence people? No. Not men. It is difficult to influence a man. Every man that has a mind it is difficult to influence them. It has to be by a superior force. So it's not just about the fact that the person is on social media. Everywhere the person goes, people gather around that person. There is a spiritual force at work through that person that gives him influence. In fact, the Bible spoke of Jesus in Matthew chapter 7, in verse 28 and 29. The Bible says when he had finished speaking, that the people were astonished at his doctrines. The Bible says because he did not teach as the scribe, but he taught as one that had authority. Give us in Amplified Translation, verse 29. Let me show you something. We are about to pray now. It says, for he was teaching as one who had and was authority. Look at this. Don't miss this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. It says, as one who had and was authority. Not just as one who had authority. But as authority personified. Remember that Jesus told them. He says that don't worry about what you say. When you stand before them in the courts. He said because at that hour. It will be given to you what to say. Because it will not be you that will speak. But my, the spirit of my father in heaven. That will speak through you. What was in the words. Of an uneducated fisherman. He spoke for 10-15 minutes. And all of a sudden the Bible says. 3,000 men were pricked in their heart and they said together, what shall we do? These were people who just said, you are drunk. What did he say in 10, 15 minutes? You want to have that kind of influence over anything created? It takes fellowship with the Holy Spirit. This is not about ministry. No. It's not about being anointed. 
is about walking with the Holy Spirit to a point where His presence overwhelms you. And then He uses your life to express the impact of His presence on all things created. It is the Holy Spirit that will hold men spellbound when you preach. Otherwise, you're preaching as a, as a minister without the Holy Ghost, it will be as dry as possible. You may have prepared a lot of intellectual work done, but it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to compel and convict your listeners. That's what influence is. It's a spiritual ability to, con to produce conviction in the heart of men and to compel compliance. Power and influence. That a man can just declare. Imagine that testimony that the young man gave. Declaration to someone else. And he connected his faith to it. Nobody laid hands on him. No, ha no hands were, were laid on him. No anointing oil. And instantly he said he felt something and the pain disappeared. What is in the voice of a man that afflictions respond to? At least if people fall, you say it's people. Maybe they are emotional. What is in the voice of a man that afflictions will respond to? That a germ, a bacteria in your body will hear the voice of that man and begin to die naturally. Growth in the body of a lady and then a declaration is made and that growth dissolves instantly. Ask yourself, what is there? That is true power and influence. It is your right to enjoy it when you have come into the place of experiencing fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, I'm presenting you to you a life. I'm not talking about ministry. No, you don't need to be in ministry to experience this life. All you need to do is embrace the fellowship that is exclusive to you with the Holy Spirit. So as I speak right now, it is not just my voice you are listening to. It is his and mine together. Look at the way this place is quiet now. And in a moment of time, I can ask him to move and he can begin to move. And all of a sudden you begin to see physical reaction. That power exists in a life that is rich in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We need him in these last days. You need him to conquer your world. You need him to influence the happenings of things around you. You need him as a testament in your life to the reality of God. So that men will see and know. Some of you came tonight because you love God but your life has not been rich in this experience that I speak of. Some of you came tonight because you want to know the Holy Spirit. You don't know why your life seems to be empty or there seems to be a vacuum. The answer to your question is captured in the fellowship that exists with the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is at work in your life, the peace of God becomes your natural atmosphere. Not only do you walk in that peace, but it, it, it influences everything around you. The Bible says the kingdom of God is in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I call to thee. Take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel. And nothing more And when you're done Please take the glory I'm satisfied 
to see you glorified. We are going to pray now, but listen before we pray. Jesus said in John 14 verse 17, He said that the spirit of truth, the world cannot receive him because they don't know him. Neither can they see him. I want to make an altar call before we pray. Because you cannot experience the Holy Spirit in your life. Look at all the things that you can enjoy when he is with you. Revelation knowledge. Righteousness and holiness. Power and influence. In this wicked world, you need power to be above. But all those experiences cannot come to you. If you have not the Holy Spirit in your life. And the way to experiencing His presence in your life is by saying yes to Jesus. Brothers and sisters and those following online, the call to salvation is a call to a relationship with God. That this God that seems not to be demystified, that a man can have a personal relationship with Him. That you can walk with Him, you can hear His voice, you can know His will. You can follow him and you can fulfill his purpose concerning your life. The call to salvation is a call to relationship with him. I want to make an altar call. In church these days, when you make altar calls, people feel ashamed. In fact, it's a part of the service that they want you to avoid quickly. We feel ashamed when the call to surrender is given for those who don't know Jesus. I'm not talking about, you can call his name. But he cannot be Lord over your life if you have not opened your heart and surrendered to him. While we are all seated, if you are here and you say, Apostle, I've heard this powerful message. And I really want to experience the Holy Spirit. But I don't know Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And if you will make the call, I will surrender to him today. If you are here and you want to surrender to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, everybody, both those that are here and those online, I want you to just stand on your feet. And I'm going to pray with you briefly. Remember that the call to salvation is a call to a rich relationship with God. It's a call to a life that is filled with experience with God. You want to surrender your heart to the Lord Jesus? Or you want to rededicate your life afresh? You used to know him before, but a lot of things have happened around you. And you really need to be restored. I want you to stand on your feet quickly and I will pray. Just within the next few seconds. I come to in my life be glorified be glorified in my life be glorified be glorified for he Can we be upstanding? We are going to pray just briefly tonight. Now open your mouth and bless the Lord everywhere. Thank Him for His word. And if you stood up to say yes to Jesus, if you stood up to make that call to surrender, I want you to walk to the front quickly. I will pray with you right now. The rest of you lift your voice and bless the Lord for what you have heard. I said lift your voice and bless the Lord for what you have heard. And then those that are making it, those that are coming to the call to surrender, please walk forward quickly. Step forward quickly. 
The rest of you lift your voice and bless him for what you have heard. Thank him. Shabarakate barabo sharamande barabo sotoro mogozayamana. In Jesus' name. I want us to stretch our hands to these ones in front. We are going to pray for them. Thank you for honoring this call. God is bringing you right now to a place where you will enjoy fellowship with Him. Your life is about to experience a relationship with God. Put your right hand on your chest and repeat these words after me. Mean them from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you were rose uh, you rose from the dead for my glory. I receive you into my heart and I thank you for saving me in Jesus name. Stretch your hands towards them. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus right now that you will write their names in the book of life. We declare that their sins are forgiven. And we declare that they are sealed by your Holy Spirit of promise. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, they will grow to serve you, to love you, and to walk with you all the days of their lives. They will get to know you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Turn to your right. Our counselors will attend to you. There's a young man waving his hand. Please celebrate God for them. Hallelujah. Can you pray one prayer? I want you to ask the Lord to reveal himself to you afresh in this season. And ask him to take you to another level in your fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Open your mouth and talk to him. Open your mouth and pray. Take me to another level. Take me to a, a higher place in my fellowship with you. Reintroduce your Holy Spirit to me afresh. Help me to know you again. Help me to know you again. Help me to know you again. To see you highly lifted up, standing in the light of your glory, pour out your fire and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. To see you highly lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 holy. I want to see. Just talk to him for 60 more seconds, say, Lord, reintroduce yourself to me afresh. to see you highly 
Introduce yourself to us again this week. I pray that you take us to a higher place of experience in the fellowship of the Spirit. Let our lives be enriched by your very presence. Let us come to know you. Now, listen to me. You see. Ministry is all about coming in partnership with the Holy Spirit. So it is what He wants to do that you either say or you sing. You know, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is our helper. And I realize that many of us understand the word helper in terms of with what was spoken about the woman when God created the woman God said I will make a suitable helper for the man in as much as the Holy Spirit is our helper it is important to, for you to know this before we close that the Holy Spirit is not a submitted helper he is the leading helper that he is your helper doesn't mean you tell him to do you submit to his leading 
For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are what? Sons of God. Now while we all stand everywhere. Before we close I want to ask the Holy Spirit. To reintroduce himself to some people here. He's a gentle fellow. Very gentle. But he can come in a way that will reintroduce himself to you. Just close your eyes and lift your hands everywhere. Holy Spirit, I ask you right now. I've spoken about you and the fellowship that every believer can experience. And I ask you within the next 60 seconds. Oh yes, he's already moving across this place. I ask that you reintroduce yourself to your children right now that you'll move from the left to the right from the front to the back and even to those that are streaming online reintroduce yourself as power reintroduce yourself in a mighty way touch them let men be caught up in higher places of glory Let men be caught up to high places of glory. Let men be caught up to the heavens. Trigger an uncommon and a new experience in the lives of your children right now. For some of them, let them feel the weight of your glory rest upon them. For some of them, let them feel your power. For some of them, let them experience you as wind. Blow from row to row. From the left to the right. Capture your people in glory. Bring them to a place of fellowship with you. Such as never seen before. Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Oh, he's right here. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome in this place. And holy, holy, holy. Lord, that's his presence. Receive his touch. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy saints and the angels now. We really worship you now. Holy, holy, holy. The living God Fall afresh On me Spirit of The living God Fall afresh I pray that this experience will go with you into this week. And anyone that is under any satanic influence, right now, the spirit, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let that influence be broken off your life now. Let that spirit let you go now. Affliction cannot hide in your body when the Spirit of God is present. And I declare that you will walk in health. You will walk in the healing power of God. 
I declare that in this week you will experience the ability of the Holy Spirit at work in your life. I declare that you will experience revelation knowledge. That the Spirit of God will come to you in your night time. He will come to you at daytime. He will reveal to you the wisdom of God. I declare that you will walk in righteousness and holiness. That your life will produce an aura of holiness. And finally I pray for you. That the power of God will be at work in your life. I declare that your words will be coated with the power of the Holy Ghost. I put the power of the Holy Ghost on your lips. Your words will convict men. Your words will compel compliance. Your words will influence men and things. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare that you will not just live or do wonders and signs alone. You will, not, Lord, you will not just produce signs and wonders. But your life will be a sign and a wonder. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm declaring it again. Your life will be a sign and a wonder. And the Lord will be glorified through your life. In Jesus name.